Tales from a Crip, right here on the Trey Six Hundo. Tales from a Crip, man. Yeah. Yeah. Trey Six Hundo. Three Six Double O. Trey Six Hundo. Three Six Double O. Trey Six Hundo. Three Six Double O. Trey Six Hundo. Yeah. Trey Six Hundo with a nigga. Say, when I was coming up in the hood, man, uh. Um, I had a homeboy, his name was Jane Burnett. I went to school with him in Second Mo Hill Elementary. Tales from a Crip. Tales from a Crip. Right here on the Trey Six Hundo. Tales from a Crip, man. When I was a young nigga, I had a little homeboy, his name was James Burnett, man. Uh, we went to school, Second Mo Hill Elementary. I hope that you catch this video, James Burnett. At school, James Burnett, he was always coming to school, you know, always, you know, even when we couldn't afford, we didn't know what the fucking polo was. He was wearing a plaid. He had a plaid one on with the with the darker with the darker pants on with the duck on them. You hear me? And he come to school with the with the penny loafers in it with the penny in it. And we didn't, you know, he was cleaning them. My people, we couldn't afford no shit like that. You no, know, he was just he was dressing like the people in the GQ magazine. I'm like, God damn, we see the GQ magazine. I always wanted to dress like them niggas. I used to always keep a GQ magazine. And say, damn, them niggas the cleanest thing in the world. But James Burnett, that's that was his style of person coming up as a child. And I mean, uh, from the third grade, Sagamo Hill Elementary. Uh, I know James got never caught up with his lifestyle, but I kept up with his lifestyle because we grew up around each other. Uh, I went into the gang culture, and, and James Burnett, he went into the Muslim culture. Uh, when I was out in the penitentiary, he was slanging bean pies. You get what I'm saying? So welcome to the good guys. You hear me? But, but me and him... As friends, you know, uh, next time I called him, uh, I was inside a place called uh, T Bazaar over here off of Mansfield. And I walked into the T Bazaar and I seen my partner James from school. I'm like, God damn. He was sitting there and he had, the, he had a little stand set up in that motherfucker. I'm like, you know what James into? You dig what I'm saying? And James, James, you know, uh, he like, brother person said, man, I like you, nigga. He always tried to put me on, had old gold tooth in his mouth. He let the little one gold tooth sound like he had a whole grill in his goddamn mouth. You hear so, uh, but anyway, James would turn me on to the Muslim shit. You know, he tried to, he said, everywhere I went, he would turn me and say, hey, you know, because we went to school together. He, he said, I want you to come perform. I always wanted to put me somewhere for me to perform. Uh, me and James just want no everyday partner see each other every day. We, we rarely see each other in life, but we always see each other. And, and the greeting was never, never different. My brother, and he, he was steady growing, he steady growing. And next time I called James, he was standing on the motherfucking corner. The nigga had on the motherfucking one, uh, uh, old straw, Dobbs hat, you know, uh, looked like he was with uh, Elliot Ness or something. You hear me? He had the little old Elliot Ness hat on with his, his suit on and his bow tie on. And he had to, and he had to goddamn me, uh, you know, he, he, he had the, the Daily Chronicles in his hand. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, he got this slanging bean pies with a daily chronicle. You know what I'm saying? So, um. As time went on, I noticed James started to get a whole congregation, man. Everywhere I look, the nigga had soldiers on one corner. Then I go to another. He got them on all. He had four, so I put them on all locations. He, was, he turned out to be a high general in the Muslim community. And it was a whole bunch of them. Uh. Them niggas disappeared. Trying to find one of them niggas right now today is like trying to find an Indian nigga in Fort Worth, Texas. A real one. I wonder what happened to that of men. It was a whole bunch, man. But believe me, but I used to see these niggas on all corners. They were running up to the cars and <laughs> suits on. Tight ass goddamn me suit on, goddamn me bow tie. You know, it's some it's some stiff niggas, stiff looking young men. You no, know, when I was coming up to you know, well, gang niggas, it was enough for them to say, "Hey, we're gang niggas, y'all can come do what we doing." Matter of fact, I knew some gang niggas that changed their life and started doing what them niggas was doing. You dig what I'm saying? Uh, I'm putting out an APP. Them boys missing in action now. I feel like you know, even even. Watch this in Fort Worth, Texas, the shit that I'm doing, and I feel like I'm alone doing it. And when I came up, I seen all them niggas out here doing it, trying to keep the peace, the violence. It was bow ties on every goddamn corner. 
It was a, a moon, a bean pie, or, or a newspaper being slung in your motherfucking window. They was worse than the bombs on the corner. They was every goddamn world. Them niggas done disappeared down here in Fort Worth, Texas. I'm down, I'm down here doing this shit by myself on some uh, land of the free and the peace shit. Uh, stop the violence shit. I just threw a we all one. Uh, shout out to brother Lee Muhammad. Came all the way from Baltimore, Maryland to speak at my function. The we all one because OD Percy trying to put the red and the blue together. You dig what I'm saying? Uh, my my thing is I wanna I wanna I wanna see what happened to all them brothers, all them Muslims, all what happened to all that help. All that help disappeared. All that help disappeared out the neighborhoods. And them niggas was everywhere. Them niggas meant something. They supposed to take a stand when the, when the gang banging wasn't taking a stand. See, gang banging came, and them niggas was out there more. They went out there, you know, when gang banging was at a high, them niggas went out there. But when it died down, they was right there. Right there at the end of it dying down. And they came in, and then them niggas died down. And the gang banging came back. And the gang banging came back harder than ever. And you don't see them niggas on the corners no more. All them people.